Let's go to 300.7. Raceways exposed to different temperatures. Raceways must be sealed to prevent the circulation of warm air to colder sections of the racewear sleeve. Sealant must be identified for use with the cable, conductor insulation, a bare conductor, a shield, or other component. Uh, uh, we had another graphic that I wanted to have, which is a refrigerator freezer graphic. Right. Because if it's a feeder, is there a rule, Mario, for feeders for sealing raceways from the outside to the inside? Yeah. Is, and for service, is there a rule? Yep. And is there something for underground installations coming into a building? Yep. yep. Okay, now this is kind of like above and, above, every, above and beyond everything else. All those other things were just seals. Now this is talking about between warm and cold air. So that means that the seal that we were going to use that would comply with 225 or 230, because it's above ground, well, that seal has to, in addition to that, it's going to have to also have case here. Now we have to somehow prevent that, that, that movement of the moist and cold air. And Brian, you have a picture here? You yeah, I've got that here. Uh, take a look. Okay, we have Brian's in there. Now, this is a water. Now, this is like just simply going into a, a freezer or walk-in cooler, what have you, and you bring it in your raceway. And now, the, the sealant that you use has to be, we talked about that. That would, Well, they're all saying the same thing. They all have to be identified for the conductors that you're going to use. And, and we know you can get some foam sprays. What do you call that? What yeah, the it? Great Stuff Fire Block. Great Stuff Fire Block. Some of that stuff is identified and some of the stuff is not. So make sure that you get the product that's identified. And, Mike, you were telling us a story of something similar to the Brian's uh, graphic that was talking about going through a, uh, a water, I mean, going through a freezer cooler. Conduit going into a freezer. They didn't mm -hmm. seal it. Uh, condensation went down on the, the thermostats, froze up over the weekend, and, and they lost $17 million in drugs. $17 million of drugs. Wow. Pharmaceuticals. A lot of Pharmaceutical. Money. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, let's, <laughs> thanks let's a lot. clarify. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't get that. I didn't either. Yeah. 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 The cartel was not happy. <laughs> they were not happy at all. <laughs> and all those people are no longer around. You know what I mean? Because the guy that didn't put the duck, the duck seal in it. They took care of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so be aware that there are consequences on simple little things. All right, we're moving on. Expansion fittings. Raceways must be provided with expansion, expansion deflection, or deflection fittings where necessary to compensate for thermal expansion, deflection, or contraction. So now, this fitting right here is, is only for expansion. It only goes this way. But they make fittings that are designed for deflection. What is it called? Let's say they have it there. Let's see. Expansion, looking at the text here, right? Deflection. Oh, and contraction. Okay. Contraction. Expansion contraction is one. It, it's the deflection fitting. So they'll be designed. But this fitting here, so anytime you have that, a raceway that's expanding or contracting, or if it's deflecting, you have to have fittings designed for that. And of course, you have to put bonding jumpers around that if the fitting itself is not going to provide the effect of ground fault current path. Okay. Michael? Mike, this is another one of those we talk about electricians not reading instructions. This is one of those, again, they need to read the instructions on. Because depending on your temperature outside, it gives you a gauge of where that fitting needs to be when you install it. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about that when we get into rigid and when we get into PVC. Yeah. See? About we have to read the instructions. Good point. Well, here we go. We're getting right into it right now. Here is some rigid conduit run on the outside. And I know of a st I heard of a story anyhow where they had they run rigid conduit. What's the dam outside of Las Vegas? Hoover. It's the Hoover. Hoover. Is that what it is, the Hoover Dam? Yeah. They had done something where they ran thousands of feet of rigid conduit. They just ran the pipe. And they found out, I think it expanded and contracted like a foot. Well, dams move. No, well, I'm not saying the dam. I'm just saying it was the heat. Yeah. Well, yeah, so the, the whole thing is moving back and forth. Nobody, at least the person, did not consider that movement. So we're going to have to get the fittings. Find out how you install them, how much can they expand and contract, and, you, and okay, when did you install it? Well, I installed it when it was freezing outside. I installed it when it was 105 degrees. I'll tell you a story about expansion, contraction, and PVC, which we're going to get into PVC, and we'll talk about that. I, I got a call from my, the inspector say, hey, I proved your slab, uh, but you might want to put your pipes together. I'm like, I, think I, I go out there, and sure enough, I was very, very good at doing slab work. That was just something that was important to me. And when I secured the ends of the raceways, they were not going to move. 
I did not know that. I just didn't want to move. But what happens, because I was so good at securing the raceways on the runs that were straight runs in a multifamily building where you're coming out at one point, you're going this way, straight this runs. way, this way. Yep. Yeah, they yeah. were straight runs, and they were locked in over here at, at the equipment with a template. The whole thing is set together. And at the other end, they were locked, and they weren't going to move. I had installed that in the afternoon in Florida heat. Mm -hmm. The next morning when the inspector came to inspect it, almost all those raceways had popped out, and there was only like about maybe like a half-inch gap. And I'm like, okay, so I have to make a compromise here. Allow that pipe to move, and then when the slab gets poured, try to figure out why is my pipe not in that wall, okay? Or make sure I put some kind of angle to it after I install it. And what time did I do it? So therefore, I realized, okay, it's, uh, it's going to contract. So, so once it contracts in the morning, it would have contracted, have a, maybe enough of a little bit of a flow not to be that secured so it's important to understand the fittings when a fitting but but in my case i didn't need a fitting it had to do with an installation at a time that i had not expected it <coughs> moving on 300.9 race oh say uh, research mike one of the things that's often missed when expansion fittings are used is the method of attaching the raceway the raceway has to be attached to in a manner that the raceway can actually move or you're not doing any good putting the expansion fittings. Same thing as you just talked about your underground installation. But I see that all the time. They put expansion fittings in and then they use standard uh, unistrut straps, which do not allow sliding. Uh, so you might as well not put the, the fitting in. One second. You're saying right here, looking at this graphic here, even if I had installed the proper expansion fittings, it's possible the way these things are mounted, it wouldn't have mattered anyhow. Exactly. Uh, by the way, this, this note is just talking about expansion characteristics um, for steel is determined by this table, and you would adjust that multiplier by 0.2, and if it's aluminum, it's 0.4. So let me just hit that really, really quickly. Number one, Brian, let's make a note to make a public input on this. I think we have a note for this. And that is that this expansion characteristics, uh, I think, should be in rigid metal conduit and about the 0.2 factor because nobody's going to find it in 300.7 that rigid metal expansion is going to be by a 20% multiplier of PVC expansion. So that's number one. So, so whenever you're doing rigid metal or metal raceway or steel conduit, you're going to have to know what PVC expansion values are. Then you're going to have to know what the rigid's going to be. And then we have to get the manufacturer's instructions. You know, all these little things are simple little things. And, and Jennifer, <coughs> you're, you're big in the instructions, and I tease you about that. But these are big deals that makes it a lot easier than going back and finding out there's a problem. We lose the effect of ground fault current path, and now somebody got killed. You know, it could, uh, death could have been resulted in, in something like this here. So thanks. Thanks, for research. Uh, Brian, were you going to say something? Well, I was just going to say, um, you know, I learned this the hard way because I didn't realize you're not supposed to use one whole heavy wall straps on PVC if you're worried about expansion. So PVC uh, approximate about uh, four inches of movement at 100 degrees of temperature change for 100 feet. I mean, let, let's repeat that again. Wow. Okay, so it's approximate. I right. Know. We could probably go to the table like and find 3. out. It's, it's a, okay, 3.4 inches. Okay, Eric said it's 3.4 inches. So for 100 so. feet of... I don't think so. Check that, Eric. I don't think, okay. I think it's four. So I know it's around four. I don't know exactly yeah, what it is, check. but um, for 100 feet of PVC conduit, so like in Florida, we like PVC, right? Because it's wet and things 100 rust. feet is not a very long run. So I did the back of an entire um, shopping center that had all the little units yeah. And they had the um, wall packs, and they wanted them added after the fact. So we're out there, and we're like, well, this was during our whole thing where we couldn't use rain tight EMP fittings, and I didn't want to do rigid, so I did PVC. And I put it up there, Tapcon, single hole strap, rock and roll. We got all the lights up, pulled it in, everything done. Um, we actually used expansion. Like I said, 4.06. What is it? Like I said, 4.06. 4.06. We'll, <laughs> okay, we'll verify that when we get into uh, so, 352. <coughs> even even what I was aware that this could be a problem because I've seen the PVC do the yeah, whole yeah, wave yeah, yeah. thing before, you yeah. know. And so I went the extra mile because this was a long run and I put in the expansion fittings and everything. 
Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. No, I put them in and everything. Like, I actually really tried to do this job right. Did you read the instructions? Probably not. But, okay. you know, I put them in anyway. Okay, you put them in. All right. And I personally, at, prior to this time, hated PVC straps, which are the little plastic straps yeah, with the two I holes. I know. They were stupid. You put the screw in, and they get all twisty, and they're not strong. No. And they're loose because the mm -hmm. PVC can move inside the strap. But you don't know. It's ridiculous. Annoying. Yeah. You know? yeah. So this? annoying. Yeah. And so I got th this job was beautiful. And I get a phone call from the property manager a little bit uh, later. And it's like, man, you know, your guys did a terrible job on that. Like, well, it wasn't my guys. It was me. So I, and I, for a fact, they're like, what are you talking about? That was beautiful. Oh, no, the pipe's horrible. It's all crooked. And I'm like, that's impossible. You know, so I go out there. Well, it will look terrible. <laughs> It really looked terrible, and 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 it was like all different kind of directions. And I thought that the expansion fitting didn't work. Yeah, yeah, couldn't have yeah. been me. Blame it on the expansion fitting. And and I actually someone because I was talking to the rep, and it was actually I, I remember this guy's a super nice guy. He was actually very kind to me because he should have called me an idiot, but he didn't. And he's like, well, Brian, he's like, uh, I noticed you didn't use PVC straps to strap your PVC with. I was like, oh, no, I hate those things. Of course, he makes them, right? <laughs> oh, I hate those things. They're all loose. They move and everything. He's like, well, he's like, the problem is, he's like, it's kind of hard for the uh, expansion fitting to work if the pipe can't move. He's like, what happened is you snap those one-hole straps on there, and it holds the pipe. And it moves just enough to get between two straps, and then the two straps hold onto the pipe, and it buckles up, and you get a big hump, and you get a dip, and you get a hump. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh. And by the way, you can't fix it once it's crooked. Right. You can't just take the straps off. Pipe. It doesn't go straight because it got hot when all that happened. So, you know, it's you have to add a lot of straps. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>